Hello everybody, um, time to make another video about records and um, the music I've been listening to in the last days or even weeks, I haven't done this for quite a while, but um, suddenly, spontaneously I thought let's just make a very quick video and uh, show some records uh, before I put them back on the shelf. Um, so uh, let's jump right into it. Um, this is a EP um, by this Korean artist named Park Hye Jin and um, this is kind of cool music, uh, more like a deep house sound but with a kind of a strong lo-fi aesthetic accompanied by her rather non-melodic uh, vocals so this is more like a type of a uh, rap and uh, again it's an EP with five tracks on it it's pretty charming uh, this came on a cute uh, yellow half translucent vinyl this album uh, is from 1972 and it's called Hoodoo Man by the German band Birth Control now this is a energetic uh, psychedelic rock album um, with a lot of uh, elements of uh, well progressive rock and uh, even a touch of kind of a jazz rock um, so um, all very tasteful and very interesting um, basically a really cool kind of crowd rock psychedelic rock album uh, from 1972 stylistically it kind of reminds you of a very early Uriah Heep a little bit um, if you like uh, Albums like, for example, uh, um, Salisbury or Look at Yourself. So it's a little bit in that vibe. Um, but uh, unlike Yura Heap, uh, the, the, the general message of birth control is quite aggressive and a little bit bitter and uh, somewhat uh, sarcastic. Um, as uh, the cover of this album certainly suggests um, but overall this is a cool record uh, with some wonderful instrumental playing and some great uh, organ parts and guitar solos and uh, certainly an outstanding drumming on this record came out on the CBS um, now to stay with German music, uh, this is um, this was the first solo album by Roman Bunker, who uh, was the guitar player of the band Embryo, and this is his first record. Came out 1980. Um, it's called uh, "Dein Kopf ist ein schlafendes Auto," which is a completely nonsensical title, meaning something like uh, "Your head is a sleeping car," but. Uh, in those days, uh, nonsensical titles were kind of popular. Um, it's a very interesting record. On the one hand, uh, it has something very raw about it. Um, it's quite obvious that most of these uh, tracks have been recorded in some kind of a small studio, probably somewhere in a cellar in Munich. Uh, certainly, um, kind of one take, one take recordings without much overdub. So. There's a kind of a garage band rawness to it, which is something you maybe appreciate. It was certainly kind of in the spirit of those times uh, back in the day uh, when uh, kind of post-punk ruled the world. And uh, this is certainly kind of, has a, there's a certain kind of punk rock aesthetic to it. But at the same time, musically, it's much more a kind of psychedelic rock album uh, um and particularly on the B-side, uh, already showing a lot of uh, the oud playing uh, that uh, in the later years uh, would kind of become uh, Roman Bunka's uh, kind of first go-to instrument on his recordings. I mean, he basically started uh, his career as a typical guitar frontman and soloist, uh, but uh, through the 80s he reinvented himself as a very respected uh, professional oud player um, which um, certainly leads me to uh, this other album by Roman Bunka which I have on CD which is called Color Me Cairo uh, this is quite outstanding this is 
basically a jazz fusion uh, combined with the Middle Eastern music, which uh, these days is a sound that captivates me actually a lot. Um, so um, this is certainly uh, one of the musical directions that I am listening uh, quite a lot these days by all kind of artists. Um, it's something that goes very well together, this kind of marriage between uh, Middle Eastern scales and Middle Eastern uh, melodies uh, and uh, a general kind of jazz environment, uh, a jazz paradigm to sound very clever. Um, so uh, this is uh, basically an album that Roman Bunka recorded as a kind of a fully fledged oud player. Um, this is a five piece with uh, Malachi Favors, Khaled Koma, Hossam Shakir and Fathi Salama. And um, yeah, this is um, basically jazz fusion in the oriental way uh, with a lot of wonderful kind of Middle Eastern percussion instruments. And uh, at the same time, the bass player is playing a double bass, an upright bass. So you kind of get this... Uh, fascinating and for me very appealing sound that immediately immediately kind of uh, reminds you a little bit of a kind of a 60s uh, spy movie soundtrack uh, uh, set a story set somewhere in Cairo maybe or uh, or Istanbul or or Tehran or wherever so uh, this is a beautiful album these are basically all live recordings uh, so you have like uh, audience reaction that you can hear and uh but in a very very kind of intimate setting so the, the the sound quality is outstanding this was recorded this this came out in 1995 um so this is a very good sounding uh record uh, with uh, a kind of a music that takes you on a journey and uh it's kind of filled with these uh, long kind of oot improvisations uh, so uh, great record roman bunka color me cairo yeah, um, to stay in uh, this type of uh, musical culture, uh, this is a, a rather well-known record uh, called Between Dusk and Dawn um, by Rabbi Abu Khalil with uh, six other artists uh, that I will not all uh, name here. This is a very similar style of music, probably a little calmer. A little more meditative than uh, Roman Bunka's album, but uh, very much in the same vein. Again, you have a kind of a jazzy, jazzy music uh, that uh, is uh, being uh, driven uh, by these uh, Middle Eastern instruments mostly and kind of Middle Eastern uh, melodies and scales. Um, and it's a pretty wonderful record. Uh, I mean, Rabbi Abu Khalil released a lot of albums in this style and is pretty well known. Uh, so, uh, but I think this one is one of the better known uh, from his uh, catalog and uh, certainly one of those records that you can uh, basically listen to in two ways. I mean, you can either listen to it and kind of pay attention to all the interesting, intricate details in the music, or at the same time, this is a quite wonderful music uh, just uh, to kind of run in the background while you are, for example, working or doing something. Uh, in my world, this is uh, certainly no taboo to kind of appropriate music uh, as a bit of a wallpaper. Um, after all, I would regard myself as a Brian Eno disciple, so uh, it's really not something. Uh, it's not something negative uh, <laughs> when I say that you can use this album very well, kind of in the background. I think this is, particularly in this time and age, this is one of the major and important functions of music uh, today, I believe. Um, um, I have two more CDs here to show you. I've been listening to the Hadouk Trio and their album Utopies. Um, this is a wonderful three-piece, uh, again, kind of a jazzy, jazz fusion sound, but uh, again expressed with uh, Middle Eastern instruments. Uh, so uh, you see I'm really kind of deep into this sound right now. This kind of a marriage between jazz and, and oriental music. Um, yeah, I mean, Hadouk Trio is uh, mostly known because of Didier Malherbe from Gong, uh, who is uh, kind of the lead artist here playing a duduk. 
Um, it's a super interesting idea to set up uh, basically a jazz trio, but to use instruments that are basically from a different region. So instead of playing a saxophone in this type of a three-piece setting, uh, Mal Erb is playing uh, a duduk. Now, um, the duduk is basically an Armenian type of oboe or clarinet uh, and uh, actually doesn't need that much of an introduction because um, coincidentally in the 90s this sound had become very very prominent to many ears because Hollywood had discovered the sound of the duduk and particularly movies from the second half of the 90s uh, have this by ton uh, particularly like um, Hans Zimmer has used the duduk in many in many movies and uh, it's uh, kind of this uh, very sort of intense kind of heart melting and yet somewhat dramatic sound but uh, interestingly DJ Malherb plays the duduk kind of very very well much more subtle uh, so um, so the way that the duduk had been used in in all these opening credits to movies uh, is always kind of a turning it to 11 and uh, kind of give you just this very forceful intense sound which is wonderful but um, the duduk here is uh, much more versatile in style the way Malherbe is playing it by the way if you if you ever want to if you ever wanted to uh, apply for a job uh, with the Haduk trio as a musician I think the minimal requirement is that you play at least five instruments um, on a professional level otherwise you probably won't get into the band because uh, the other guys Steve Sheehan and Loy Ehrlich they are kind of uh, cut from the same cloth like uh, DJ Malarp uh, so everybody is kind of playing five six different instruments on this record and uh, everybody is extremely good also a little uh, bonus point for this very wonderful and quite quite diverse and versatile album actually um, on three tracks uh, John Hassel is playing and uh, kind of changing the trio into a quartet the last three tracks are are with his participation so this is a wonderful record and just a week ago I started to listen to it and I'm pretty sure I'm far from being done and uh, most certainly I will uh, follow up this band much more and get uh, some of their other albums. Uh, most of it uh, is still pretty much available on CD. Um, here is another CD that is kind of nice. I discovered this uh, more by coincidence or more. I just saw the cover and just, just, uh, uh, just took a risk, basically. Um, so this is a band called Garage à Troyes. And this, this yeah, the album is called Autre Mer. Now, this may sound like a French band, but I think they are from the United States. Uh, this is basically a jazz outfit playing kind of a cool, uh, swinging uh, jazz rock. Uh, very much in the vibe of the 60s and maybe 50s. But, uh, um, well, this, this entire album is basically like a four soundtrack so uh, this is like a soundtrack to a imaginary movie particularly a french nouvelle vague movie probably so obviously you probably kind of feel reminded of um, l'ascenseur pour l'échafaud by miles davis uh, as the soundtrack to this louis mal film but um, the music is much more much cuter so to speak uh, it's very kind of a pleasant sound and um just a nice listen uh, with a lot of um, exotic percussions and a little bit tabla playing um, which always goes very well with this kind of a dramatic cinematic jazz sound um, uh, particularly vibraphones and marimbas um, so you kind of get the idea I think so it's a very nice uh, diggy pack um, there's actually a lot of liner notes which are all referencing to this movie that does not exist um, but overall, it's a very nice uh, album and the kind of a CD that works pretty well. Probably, I don't know, when you have people over or a kind of party in the living room and uh, you are looking for music that's kind of in the middle and uh, not too extreme or not too kind of obnoxious. Um, it's a good choice. Um, so let's continue. 
Um, what more do we have? Um, yeah, well, actually, in a very same musical spirit is this album here. Uh, so I bought another Janko Milovic uh, record, uh, this time uh, the wonderful Soul Impressions. Um, so this is a, uh, again, a kind of a jazz rock album, uh, but very soulful and very playful and in parts has more kind of a big band vibe to it. And uh, so this is a reissue that came out on Underdog Records and it's one of those records that you kind of buy based on the cover alone. <laughs> It's just fantastic, um, but it's a great sound. Um, it's not a it's not a particularly stressful interpretation of jazz music. It's all floating pretty nicely, and uh, like uh, the previous album uh, by uh, Garage à Trois, um, this too um, is kind of a very very sort of smooth, uh, funky jazz, and uh, certainly uh, nothing that would disturb anybody. So this came out in 1975, which must have been a very busy year for Janko Nilovic because uh, it's the same year when he released his uh, album from Belgium, this Funky Tramway project, uh, which was basically an entire kind of jazz rock, uh, jazz funk uh, record about Brussels. Um, but uh, <clears throat> he also came out with this solo album here. Sounds pretty good. So, what else do we have here? I have two records, two more records to show you, I think. Oh yeah. Um, so first of all, um, this is a EP by Asmari. So talking about Belgium, by the way, this is a wonderful uh, jazz outfit uh, from Brussels. And um, I've already shown, shown their, their LP that's called Samai that came out this year, actually, I think last year. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I think it was the beginning of this year. You know, this was their previous uh, release, uh, an EP, uh, which is called Ekera. Beautiful cover, isn't it? Um, and again, a wonderful, wonderful record. Uh, this, once again, is a example of, uh, of, a, sort of a jazz jazz band or in parts jazz fusion band that is completely dedicated to Middle Eastern melodies and Middle Eastern sounds and uh, um, interestingly if you compare all those projects um, that I've been now talking about that all do this kind of a uh, melange of, uh, of, of, of uh, the Orient and jazz um, interestingly they all sound completely different to each other I think um, so um, while those two musical styles go pretty well together, um, the, re the result can be very, very different each time. So um, this is a great band and I really love this album. Um, this is a wonderful listen from beginning to the end. Uh, um, so um, certainly uh, one of uh, the contemporary uh, young bands that uh, will most certainly stay on my radar. Yeah, so that's uh, Ekera by Asmari. Anything interesting inside? That's a pretty nice label, isn't it, here? So, one more record. Um, now this one is a, actually a quite well-known nugget here. Uh, uh, um, this is uh, Zvukimu which is a Russian album uh, that was produced and recorded by Brian Eno uh, in those days when Eno was kind of jet-setting the world and looking for interesting musical projects and uh, he had uh, kind of his gaze was uh, directed at Russia um, and this uh, came out kind of at the same time when uh, the Iron Curtain if not started to crumble certainly was already shaking. So Zvukimu is the band of Piotr Mamonov, uh, who is a kind of avant who was a kind of avant-garde artist. He actually died like two months ago, by the way. His band could certainly be described as experimental and kind of avant-gardistic uh, and certainly sound-wise kind of indebted to post-punk and uh, to some extent uh, kind of like a New York no wave uh, music but uh, through 
the Brian Eno treatment, uh, this becomes a quite a charming, charming and very coherent music. Uh, so uh, while uh, the entire album is kind of covered with these uh, impulsive, uh, avant-gardistic moments, it's quite wonderful how uh, Eno seems to hold it all together and to make it a kind of a palatable record uh, that you can uh, offer to people around the world uh, and uh, that kind of makes musically makes pretty much sense so um, it's kind of a cool funky vibe uh, a little bit um, maybe um, maybe if you think like um, um, like my life in the bush of ghosts or something like that a little bit in that way um, but at the same time uh, there is certainly a kind of a post-punk uh, aesthetic to it and uh, it has a certain twang um, yeah so um, this is a really nice record and certainly something um, that I'm glad to have in my collection albeit not something that I would listen to all the time um, but uh, yeah certainly uh, one of those uh, interesting mosaic pieces uh, in uh, this vast uh, Brian Eno universe and that's it for now, and uh, I hope this was interesting, um, I hope I didn't blather too much, uh, because in the end it's the only thing I can do, uh, rambling, um, <laughs> the professor of rambling, <laughs> so um, I say um, take care, stay healthy, um, keep it spinning, and um, see you next time.